Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Simple Rules by Donald Saul. Our global village is becoming increasingly complex, and Simple Rules provides us with practical strategies to help us cope with the increasing complexity of modern life. It is the belief of authors Donald Saul and Kathleen Eisenhart that by developing a few simple, yet effective rules, we can learn not only to cope with, but also to thrive in a complex world. You may not be aware of this, but the origins of the term KISS can be traced back to the United States Navy in the 1960s. KISS, keep it simple, stupid, is a simple rule. It is a rule that states that if you keep your design simple, you will avoid having to deal with unnecessary complications. The goal of design should be straightforward, and anything that isn't absolutely necessary should be eliminated. Kelly Johnson came up with the acronym because he believed that any engineer should be able to repair an aircraft with only the most basic of tools. However, while some may believe that the stupid element refers to individuals, it actually refers to the relationship between things breaking or going wrong and the level of expertise required to repair them. According to the KISS principle, a stupid design is one that can only be repaired by specialists. KISS, keep it simple stupid, is a minimalist concept that embodies the concept of simple rules. But why do we require simple rules in the first place, and how can they be beneficial to us? When it comes to business strategy, Donald Saul, a former Harvard professor, is regarded as a global authority. Furthermore, he happens to be an accomplished management expert, despite the fact that he despises the term, and is currently employed as a senior lecturer at the MIT Sloan School of Management. Kathleen Eisenhardt is a strategy professor at Stanford University School of Engineering, where she collaborated on the paper. They have spent the last decade working with businesses all over the world, and they have developed a set of highly effective, tried and tested rules to help people deal with complex problems at home and at work, both personally and professionally. We'll take a quick look at simple rules and demonstrate why it's such a powerful text in such a complicated world. The effectiveness of these rules in different domains will also be discussed. Finally, we'll explain six simple rules that anyone can use to be more decisive and perform better. Then this is the book for you if you're struggling with information overload, want to kick a bad habit, or are simply curious about what comedian Tina Fey and Japanese honeybees can teach us about keeping things simple. Complexity can be taxing on the mind. Before we get into the specifics of what simple rules are, let me ask you a question. Can you tell me why you believe people avoid paying taxes? Tax rates, a person's income level or education, perceived unfairness of the tax system, or the level of government scrutiny are all factors that you might think are significant. Of course, any of these factors could play a role, but none is more important than the issue of complexity. According to the findings of a study examining personal income tax compliance, the complexity of tax policies was the single most significant predictor of whether citizens evaded or paid their taxes. The policies governing the United States income tax accounted for 3.8 million words in 2010. There are 3.8 million words in this book. Let's put this in context, shall we? Despite the fact that it is seven times as long as Tolstoy's War and Peace, there are no interesting plot twists or insights into the human condition to be found. This demonstrates that when something is overly complicated, people become overwhelmed, have difficulty following the rules, or simply stop following the rules. Although we frequently attempt to address complex problems with complex solutions, we have found that this does not always work well. Confronting complex problems with complex problems can result in more chaos than it can solve. Simple rules, on the other hand, can be a very effective weapon against this. Early in the 21st century, our authors collaborated on a research project to examine the winning and losing strategies of businesses dealing with the twin challenges of globalization and the Internet age. As a result of increasing complexity, the companies that developed a handful of simple rules for linking strategies to implementation found themselves in a better position than they had anticipated. Having a handful of simple rules in place helped leaders, managers, and employees cut through the noise, make on-the-spot decisions, and adapt to rapidly changing circumstances while still keeping the big picture in mind in thriving companies like Intel and Cisco. So, what exactly are the simple rules? Brief guidelines are shortcut strategies that can save us time and effort by focusing our attention and simplifying the way we process information can be found in these resources. However, simple rules are not only applicable in complex, challenging, and fast-moving business environments, they are also applicable in other areas of life as well. Simple rules are essential for all of us. Simplicity can assist us in coping with a complex situation. We've discovered that, 
Despite the fact that we live in a complex world, we don't always require complex solutions. But the authors are careful to point out that simple rules are not universally applicable, and that they are not suitable or practical for every type of problem. This book is not the solution to all of life's problems, and its central message is not to abandon the proverbial rule book in favor of an abbreviated list of guidelines. When it comes to certain domains, simple rules are simply not feasible or logical. For example, would you be content to live next to a nuclear reactor that was powered by a set of simple rules instead of fossil fuels? Simple rules are effective in situations where there are clearly defined boundary conditions, as well as in providing guiding frameworks. When it comes to surviving and navigating our increasingly complex and data overloaded world, they can be a life-saving antidote. Similarly to what we saw in the paradox of choice, when faced with a plethora of options, fear creeps in, and we become concerned about making the wrong choice. As a result, we put off making decisions, cling to the safest option, or avoid making a decision at all. The JAM experiment demonstrates that when shoppers are presented with an excessive number of options, they are less likely to make a purchase as a result of decision fatigue. Customers were more likely to purchase a jar of jam when they were presented with only six different types of jam. Customers' likelihood of purchasing a jar of jam dropped by 57% when they were given a choice of 24 different jams to choose from. Many of us have experienced the effects of decision fatigue, and having a set of simple rules in place can help us avoid falling victim to this condition, allowing us to act more quickly and effectively. In their research, Brian Wansink and his colleagues discovered that dieters who adhere to one simple rule lost, on average, a pound per month while trying to lose weight. According to the findings of the study, small business owners who adhere to simple accounting rules are more likely to improve their accounting practices. Distinctive business and personal accounts, pay yourself a set salary every month, and other similar rules were instrumental in streamlining these businesses because they eliminated the need to go through complicated processes. Our authors believe that developing simple rules is important because, without them, we'd be paralyzed by the sheer mental brain power required to sift through the complicated messiness of our world. Keeping simple rules as simple as possible. Simple rules are effective because they are simple to follow and allow for a great deal of flexibility. When we examine the origins of the keep it simple, stupid rule, we can see how it came to be. Unfortunately, fixing planes was too complicated, and it required highly trained individuals to resolve technical issues. The solution was to hire more people. By following the KISS rule, they were able to establish a framework within which to operate. Keep it as simple as possible. The following characteristics are shared by all effective simple rules. They're restricted to a small number of rules. The optimal number is four or five, which they must follow. They're tailored to the individual or organization who employs them, and they work best when applied to a specific action or event, such as prioritizing medical care, to achieve the best results. We can remember and maintain focus on the most important rules if the number of rules is limited to a certain number. Think about how Michael Pollan sums up his diet recommendation into just seven words, eat food, but not too much of it, and make it mostly out of plants. According to research, adhering to these simple nutritional guidelines can help prevent diabetes, obesity, and heart attacks. Simple rules are effective not only because they are concrete and simple to follow, but also because they are not overly prescriptive. Simple rules are not vague platitudes such as do your best. They are specific and actionable. These guidelines provide clear and practical guidance, while also allowing us the flexibility to exercise judgment and adapt to changing circumstances, which is especially important when people's lives are at stake. As a result, simple rules are succinct and to the point. Because they're tailored to a specific area of focus, they provide a framework rather than definitions, they're memorable, and they tend to emphasize prioritization over other considerations. Prioritization can be made simpler. In an emergency situation, how do you determine whether someone is going to die or survive? To make matters even more complicated, how do you allocate limited medical resources to injured soldiers in a war zone? In situations like these, there isn't enough time to vacillate or go through a lengthy manual of protocols to be safe. Simple rules are difficult to follow in this situation, but they are necessary. Triage is a term used by physicians to describe the process of selecting the most appropriate treatment for each patient. The word triage comes from the French language and means to sort. In most cases, it is a quick process that determines the severity of a patient's condition and the likelihood that they will recover with or without medical intervention. Wounded soldiers are divided into three groups, and their care is prioritized based on their classification. It takes less than a minute to check the patient's vital signs and make an assessment of the severity of his or her condition. Patients with the most life-threatening conditions are seen first and treated as quickly as possible. 
If a patient's condition is hopeless, it is preferable to devote one's efforts to saving the life of someone else. Prior to the implementation of triage, wounded soldiers were treated on a first-come, first-served basis, regardless of the severity of their injuries. As a result, a high number of soldiers died as a result. As a result, there has been a significant increase in the rate of survival. As a result, even though implementing the simple rules of triage can be emotionally draining, the framework has forced more careful prioritization of resources. Simple rules are required for organizations, bees, and communities to coordinate and thrive. Most likely, you've come across infographics that break down complicated processes into a series of simple steps. Zipcar's operation is coordinated through the use of a six-step procedure. Zipcar is a car sharing service that competes with traditional car rental and car ownership services. In addition to offering low-cost car rentals and car ownership deals, they have a company ethos that is centered on community rather than on cost cutting. When someone rents a car, their satisfaction with the vehicle is highly dependent on the condition in which the vehicle was left by the previous driver, which is a common occurrence. The simple rules of Zipcar are designed to ensure that every customer has a positive experience during their trip. Six simple rules, such as filler up, no smoking, and report damage, are followed by the general public. The simplicity of these rules helps to reduce costs while also eliminating the hassle of having to sign lengthy contracts with lots of fine print. Humans aren't the only ones who benefit from working in groups. When it comes to Japanese honeybees, having more wings is preferable to having fewer. If a colossal hornet approaches the honeybee's hive, even a single honeybee will not be able to defeat the lion. In contrast, by working together, the bees can defeat the intruder using a coordinated technique known as thermobulling. Honeybees form a protective ring around the hornet and vibrate their wings so quickly that the attacker becomes overheated and dies. This results in the death of the hornet due to asphyxiation. Simple rules are useful at the macro level because they help to keep societies in order. In the 1500s, Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits, devised a concise list of simple rules to guide his followers. For the order, these became known as the formula, which stood in stark contrast to the voluminous rules that governed other religious orders. It was the Jesuits' rules that focused on what needed to be done, which was education and saving lost souls, rather than where, when, or with whom it needed to be done. Many priests were liberated as a result of this streamlining from time constraints, geographical limitations, and daily cloistering. As a result, their influence grew from the original ten priests and spread throughout the world. Three easy rules to help you make better decisions. There are a total of six simple rules, three of them are concerned with decision making, and the remaining three are concerned with taking action. Setting boundaries, prioritizing tasks, and imposing limits or stopping are all examples of decision making rules. In addition to providing guidelines on what to do, and what not to do, these rules also address what is important to do and how to set boundaries. Without requiring a great deal of time, analysis, or information, boundary rules guide the decision about what to do next. They assist us in making quick decisions, which is particularly important when the stakes, or even the fences, are high. Criminals rely on one simple rule when deciding which houses to break into, according to a study conducted on how they choose which houses to break into. The presence of a vehicle parked outside a home is the single most reliable indicator of whether or not the home is occupied. In situations where we must rank various alternatives that compete for resources such as money, time, and attention, prioritization rules come in handy. The prioritization rule is used in a variety of situations, such as triage, assigning engineers to new product development projects, concentrating sales representatives on promising customers, and allocating marketing expenditure to the most profitable income generating products are all examples of how prioritizing rules can be used in the business world. The ability to prioritize quickly and correctly is critical when it comes to investing money. While investment options are limitless, available funds are limited. Rather than complicated algorithms, investors tend to rely on a straightforward prioritization rule that dates back to the Babylonian Talmud. A man should always place one third of his money inland, one third into merchandise and keep a third in his hand. Babylonian Talmud, when applied to today's modern money market, this rule translates into investing equally in a variety of asset classes. Finally, stopping rules assist us in determining when it is necessary to terminate a project. Because we need to know when a project or investment should be terminated, this is critical information. In a nutshell, we must know when to call a halt. Three simple rules for getting things done right. Process rules, as opposed to decision-making rules are concerned with improving the way things are done. 
because they provide concrete guidelines on how to do something while still allowing people to be creative, exercise judgment, and adapt to the specific task at hand, process rules are effective. The how-to rule is the most frequently encountered process rule. While how-to rules may appear to be restrictive, they have been successfully employed by creative types to hone their crafts. The comedian Tina Fey drew inspiration from her time spent as a cast member of the legendary comedy show Saturday Night Live. She devised her own set of nine simple rules to assist her in the management of her comedy show, 30 Rock. For example, when hiring, mix Harvard nerds with Chicago improvisers and stir, or never tell a crazy person that he's crazy, were two of the guidelines. The other two process rules, coordination and timing, are one of a kind how to rules that are only applicable in specific situations. When there are multiple people involved in a task, coordination rules assist us in getting the job done. Among other things, these rules orchestrate the behavior of Japanese honeybees and Zipcar customers, among other things. In a situation such as improvisational comedy, where actors must come up with good answers quickly, coordination rules are extremely beneficial. In order to buy themselves some time, they respond to everything that has been mentioned with the words yes and. The ability to use this rule whenever we are under the spotlight and under pressure to come up with a quick and clever response is not restricted to the stage. Timing rules tell us when we should and should not complete tasks. They can be used by insomniacs to determine when to retire for the night, athletes to determine when to retire from competition, and businesses to determine when to launch a new product. Clocks, calendars, and circadian rhythms can all be used to determine when something happens. Baron Rothschild who founded his banking business in the 1760s, took a more metaphorical approach to time rules than most of his predecessors. His trading axiom for stocks and bonds was, buy when there is blood on the streets, which he applied to both. To create your own simple rules, follow these three steps. Our authors discovered that, in the high-performing companies they studied, managers typically followed three steps to develop simple, specific rules that were easy to follow. A critical process, such as making acquisitions or allocating capital, was identified by the researchers. They identified the bottlenecks that were impeding growth and then devised a set of guidelines to help them manage the process moving forward. For the purpose of developing our own simple rules, we must first identify a critical action, identify a bottleneck, and then eliminate the bottleneck using a simple rule. So, if you're looking to lose a few pounds, here's how to create a simple rule that works for you. First and foremost, determine the critical action. This could mean eating less or getting more exercise. Then you need to figure out where the bottleneck is. We can use this opportunity to ask ourselves what is preventing us from achieving our goal. Is it a case of overeating, binging, or consuming an excessive amount of junk food? After that, you must determine when, where, and why this occurs. Is it possible that one overeats while watching television? If this is the case, a simple rule can be used to eliminate the bottleneck. Based on the examples provided above. One simple rule might be, never eat while watching television. In addition, it's important to remember that, as with anything in life, rules can and should evolve over time. Every now and then, it is necessary to throw caution to the wind. Our author's parting advice is that rules aren't meant to be followed forever. Frequently, we must unlearn old rules in order to formulate better ones. Remember the days when we had to wait for an episode of our favorite television show to air each week on television? If we missed an episode and didn't record it, we'd only have a few opportunities to catch up in the future. To make up for the fact that we might have missed a few episodes, and to keep us interested, TV shows followed one rule, have a stable cast of characters who appear in every episode. This allowed viewers to still tune in and get a good sense of what was going on in the storyline. The times, on the other hand, have changed. Because of streaming services such as Netflix, it is no longer necessary to worry about missing episodes. We have the ability to rewatch episodes with the click of a button. Markets shift, new technology emerges, bringing with it a slew of new competitors, and business models shift with them. Companies that are too rigidly rule-driven will not be able to keep up with the times and will lose customers if they do not adapt. Finally, I'd like to say. We've all heard the adages about the importance of simplicity. Less is more, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, and makes simple tasks simpler all adages that can be applied to life. Simple rules, whether they are referred to as guidelines, rules of thumb, or heuristics, provide us with a framework for combating complexity with greater simplicity. Simple rules aren't recipes, and they don't tell us what to do, just like any other set of guidelines. Instead, they instruct us on how to make quick decisions about what to do. They assist in drowning out the noise, identifying what is most important, and taking decisive and effective action. 
you are not doomed to a life of complexity. So, what steps will you take to create your own set of simple rules to live by? Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook. Thank <laughs> you.